Hey everyone, Janine here from Lupus Health Shop. Uh, today we have a wonderful guest, Kirsty Washam. She is from the Fed Up Pharmacist on Instagram. If you haven't followed her yet, you, you need to. She's got awesome topics and posts and full of wonderful information that is really gonna help you. So, thank you so much for joining us. Thanks for having me, I'm glad to be here. Absolutely, I'm really excited to have you on. Just tell me a little bit about yourself and kind of what your passion is and how you got started. Sure. So as you mentioned, I'm the Fed Up Pharmacist and that is not a negative connotation at all. So I came to this through my own struggles with autoimmunity right after I graduated pharmacy school. I started having all these weird symptoms. I was anxious and depressed. My hair was falling out, you know, mm -hmm. I was gaining weight despite all this stuff I was doing to not be gaining weight. And my doctor just said, you're stressed. Here's a prescription for an antidepressant. Here's a prescription for anxiety medicine. Go on your merry way. Isn't and that so frustrating? It's so frustrating. And you know, I feel like as a pharmacist, the doctors, they're giving me anxiety medicine and antidepressants and telling me that I'm stressed. And I just knew something was wrong. And it took probably three years after that for me to get a diagnosis of Hashimoto's because they kept drawing oh just PSH. And we'll talk more about this today too, but they just kept drawing like this one thyroid lab and saying, oh, you're fine, you're fine. And it wasn't until I woke up one day with this huge nodule on my neck that I finally got somebody to listen to me and draw the right labs. Oh my goodness, it has to be so scary too, just because like you're sitting at the doctor's and like, okay, you're supposed to, this is this should be the answer, it's obviously not. Yes, and I feel that's like so that's tough. a common theme with people who have chronic illness, is like, you're not crazy, but the doctor right. sure as heck will make you think you are, yeah. That is so true. <laughs> yes. I can't tell you how many times like I've had doctors just look at me and they're like, oh, okay. Yeah, I mean, sure. You're like you look healthy, you look fine, your labs are okay. Mm -hmm. What's the problem? Actually, speaking of labs, so you're talking about medications, and how did you like what triggered in your mind that the lab work wasn't good enough? I guess, like, what made you kind of you know look into it and figure out? how to dig deeper. Really, it was thanks to this resource, and I've got the book here with me. Um, Dr. Isabella Wentz, she's mm -hmm. known as the thyroid pharmacist, and I started reading her book because really in pharmacy school, all they ever told me about was TSH, which is thyroid right. stimulating hormone, right? So that's like the test that most endocrinologists will use and most primary care providers, but that's not even a thyroid hormone. Like that, right. it's, it's a pituitary hormone. Yeah, so, that's so true. <laughs> like something's not right. And so I started reading um, just more and more and thought I've got to find somebody to get these labs. And it was not easy, even as a pharmacist right. trying to convince someone that I need to have all these labs drawn, even though I'm paying for it and it's my blood. Um, wow. I'm, the one I'm the one sacrificing, but it was hard to get somebody to draw the labs. And so I finally did, but there's a huge wide range of TSH levels from like 0.2 to maybe like eight that your provider mm -hmm. can say that you are normal. Right. And that's, that's mind blowing to me. And really most people feel best somewhere, I don't know, like 0.5 to two. So like a much more yep. narrow window than what they traditionally will say is okay. Right, yeah, that's like the optimal range that's rather optimal than being range. like a high normal or low normal. Yes, so just because you're normal doesn't mean it's optimal, right? That we're exactly. feeling our best. Yeah, I love that saying. So there are other labs. There's T4, which is inactive thyroid hormone. There's T3, which is our active form. And there's like processes in the body that have to happen for us to convert the inactive to active. There's also something called reverse T3, and then as your community is really familiar with, are antibodies. And so there are antibodies like this specific to lupus, there are antibodies specific to the thyroid, and those are thyroglobulin antibodies and thyroperoxidase antibodies. Those are big words, but so TG antibodies and TPO antibodies. <clears throat> and ideally, 
those would be probably less than two if you're in remission. And mm -hmm. I actually got mine into remission by so now by diet means that you don't take a pill and it's okay, or you're taking a pill and it's under 2.0. Um, I'm currently tapering off of our medication. Oh wow! Congratulations. Yeah, yeah. That's so exciting. It is exciting, but. <clears throat> My first round, I did something called the Whole30. Mm -hmm. That decreased my thyroid antibodies by 50% in one wow. month. And then I thought, well, this is a fluke. Like, that was crazy. I did it again and another 50% decrease. So it's to the point that I know my dietary triggers and I essentially have no antibodies in my body. That is phenomenal. Yeah. How it's exciting. Really, it's, really cool. it's really cool. You need like a thyroid party. Yes, a thyroid party. Absolutely. Yeah, I'm tapering off. It's, it's great. So, so like, how do you, so can you give us an example of how you were feeling before you started the whole 30 and the thyroid issues as compared to what symptoms you started noticing that were alleviated? Sure. So a lot of similarities, you know, between lupus maybe and thyroid symptoms, especially hypothyroidism, which is pretty much what I'm talking about, because that's the most common, even in the lupus community would be so hypothyroidism. Common. So, so common. So things like joint pain, brain fog, fatigue, my hair was falling out, you know. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and so, the hair's not growing back, <laughs> but it's yeah. not falling out by the handfuls anymore. Um, it's so scary too. Out. It's scary, yeah, you look in the, like in the shower and you're like. Yeah, you're like, oh my God, it came out of me. Do I have any <laughs> hair left? Um, mm -hmm. But the brain fog was unreal, you know, I was a newly practicing pharmacist, so it was scary because I couldn't remember. You know, I would just lose train of thought like mid sentence and not be able to complete things. So that's really gotten a lot better. That's good. So and were you in school level when you had these symptoms? Sorry. I probably, no, you're okay. Looking back on it, knowing what I know now, I likely was undiagnosed for probably 15 years. Oh, wow. I can look back and see, you know, little things like my hair thinning, um, my skin drying out, constipation that I'd had going on for a long term, but didn't know what it was. Right. Oh, I lost my train of thought as we're talking about brain fog. <laughs> <laughs> um, so we were talking about symptoms. Oh yeah. So, so were the symptoms like sudden? Like, did you just like, you were like, wow, week three or week two, I have zero brain fog, or was it like very gradual? Some of the symptoms were alleviated fairly quickly. So like my GI symptoms, like the reflux and the constipation, that went away pretty fast. Once I eliminated gluten and dairy from my diet, those went away pretty quickly. The other stuff kind of took a while. I don't, I mean, I don't know exactly, but I'd say within that month, I was that's phenomenal. Like, okay, I'm coming back to myself. Oh, that's awesome. This is yeah. a good feeling. What you see so far, subscribe and click on the bell so you don't miss out next week on our new video. Now back to the topic of the week. Yes, and you're like, oh my gosh, I'm on to something. You know, I've got to tell people about this. Yes, yeah, it's, it's really yeah. a huge eye opener. So for people who are watching, um, real quick, what is the Whole30 diet? So the Whole30 diet is, the diet, shouldn't use that word, but it's an elimination diet where you cut out the most inflammatory food groups. So these are things like legumes, dairy, all grains, soy, even things like alcohol and sugars. So it really kind of wipes the slate clean. Mm -hmm. And then there's a scheduled or planned reintroduction where you can introduce those foods. You wait a few days if you have a reaction and then go from there. So it's a really great way without expensive testing because I've done like the GI test where they test for your food sensitivities and that stuff's not cheap. This is no. a good way for people to, no it's not. It's a good way for people to do this at home and kind of see the benefits themselves. I mean, you're gonna be eating anyway, so you might, might as well eat good food. Exactly. And, and for anyone that's like really intimidated by the fact that you just named five food groups. <laughs> Yeah. what not to eat yeah it's so worth it when when you go from feeling like horrible with your lupus symptoms 
and then you eat, you know, foods that are fresh, fresh vegetables. Um, you know, like you said, no dairy, no gluten, um, maybe no um, like histamine types foods. Yes. You, you just like, you wake up as a brand new person. It's almost like I would never even think about eating a slice of pizza again because no. you feel so good. Yes, and people at work, you know, they bring donuts, they bring pizza, they bring all this stuff. And I'm literally at this point, not even tempted by it because mm -hmm. I know how that would make me feel. And I just right. think, you know, something called food freedom where you get to choose, you know, if I wanted something, I would eat it, but I know how it would affect me and I would pay the consequences for it. So exactly. It's a, it's a lot of conscious effort, but it's worth it. I mean, it once you, you, you start changing, you're growing and I totally agree. I'm so glad that you found it. So you said you, you did it once and then did it again for another month. Does that mean that you eliminated more foods or you, like, no, I kept those. So I kept those foods out for 60 okay. days. Oh, okay. Yes. And so I did a now. whole 60 instead of okay. a whole 30. Yeah. From there, how do you, like, do you, when you're taking your medications, um, do you take actually a compounded medication or you're on Synthroid? Don't I mind. don't. So I actually take one of the natural desiccated thyroids. They call it NDT. So what I take is WP thyroid, which actually it's on back order. So I'm taking nature thyroid now. So there's WP thyroid, nature thyroid, and armor, which are kind of right. like the natural thyroid hormones. They're derived from animal thyroid glands. So they contain biologic amounts of the T4 and T3, and also some other hormones that we don't measure as much. And for I'm, everyone watching, what does biologic mean? So biologic is natural. It's what our bodies would normally make. Okay. Yeah. And that's similar to, you know, you mentioned compounds. Compound is a great option because it's the same thing. It's going to be the biologic thyroid hormone, but a specialized compounding pharmacy is going to make that specific to the patient. So if you need more T3 or more T4, they can make those ratios specific to what you need and what your doctor orders. And they can also avoid the issue that I have mainly with Synthroid and things like that is that we already talked about trying to avoid gluten and dairy and artificial mm -hmm. colors and fillers. And Synthroid's full of that stuff. Oh, that's good to know. I actually, so I don't take Synthroid either. I go to a compounding pharmacy Yeah. Um, for mine. And you're so right. They can make sure it's like dairy-free, egg-free, gluten-free, um, kosher, everything. Yes, so. yes. It's awesome that they have that ability to just tweak it to the person. It's so nice, so individualized. And I, that makes the biggest difference in, in the success of your treatment. It's a personalized approach. Yes, because that, like we said, you know, that is T3, which is active, and T4. Mm -hmm. Synthroid is T4 only. And okay. a lot of people don't feel, so, and it's synthetic, so it's synthetic T4. And a lot of people just don't feel well on it because they can't convert that T4 into T3. Now, is that a separate, do you know, I don't know if you know this or not, but is that a separate condition? Or is it's that not a separate same? condition, but there are things like nutrient deficiencies, um, dietary issues, I'm trying to think of what else. Those are the main things. I mean, people have okay. major issues converting T4 to T3, especially those of us with autoimmune conditions. Right. Is there, is, I don't know if you actually know, is there a connection between the cortisol um, and your thyroid with the with the hormone right, dysregulation? Or is that separate? Yes. I mean, a, you're talking about like adrenal issues? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. So yes, all that is like in this feedback loop. I do have, I also have adrenal problems on top of my thyroid issue. Mm -hmm. And you know, it's common with lupus too. It's actually, it's underdiagnosed with lupus. Um, so for me to say it's common, it's, it's common as in a lot of people are suffering from it and show signs of it, but they're not fully diagnosed with it. So it's definitely something to look into as well. Yes, and to that point, medically speaking, unless you see a functional medicine provider, you're not gonna be diagnosed with any adrenal disorders until your adrenal glands have to like pretty much totally tanked. That's so true. And then by that, that, that 
at that point you've got like you, there's you're so far gone yes there's nothing left so yes absolutely exactly. there are so many connections with adrenal and thyroid and all those hormonal systems in the body what do you suggest if someone uh say with lupus um is wants to learn more about thyroid issues and you know what are the next steps and how to communicate with their doctor to, to take like a full thyroid panel sure so i'm going to read this stat real quick that i found it was a 2009 yeah. study in the journal of clinical rheumatology and it found that over six percent of people with lupus tested had thyroid problems caused by autoimmune thyroid disease mm -hmm. so there's a huge percentage of that population that's probably not being tested or being treated, you know, appropriately. And unfortunately for those of us that have an autoimmune condition, we're at like such an increased risk of developing another one. Exactly. You know? So that's something to really be cognizant of too. And so I think I would just approach my provider and say, look, you know, I have, I have lupus, I have an autoimmune condition, I'm still having XYZ symptom would you mind drawing these additional thyroid tests, you know, and take them a list because likely to be honest, Janine, they're not going to know what to test for. Okay. Right. So <laughs> you're going to have to literally take them this list. Like Isabella Wentz has it on her website too. Take okay. that list. And I think I printed it off. Do you have it on your website? I don't have it, but I can absolutely oh, okay. link to it. Yeah. I'll try. Yeah. Okay. Um, but take them the list and say, hey, this is what I want to have done. If you don't mind drawing these labs and then see see what happens. I absolutely agree. You know, my doctor, as a side note, my doctor had no idea about like thyroid issues. She's like, oh, you know, talk to your other doctor and see if you should be on, on Synthroid. And I was like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> like, never mind. I'll yeah, definitely never talk mind. to my medicine doctor. <laughs> yeah, and for people who are on Synthroid currently, and if they say, hey, I'm just not yeah. feeling well, um, I'm on Synthroid. There are conversion charts that you can find online and I'll try to post that to you. Give me some great ideas, but I'll try to post a link because there's an easy chart that converts Synthroid to the natural thyroids. Oh, awesome. You know, yes. actually, yeah, if you could send me that link, sure, um, I'll post it in the description of our video whenever you're done making it on your site. Yeah, that'd be a great idea. That way people can see it. That'd be so helpful. Oh my goodness. what would be like people with lupus are pretty are very confused they're scared um, they're intimidated so the goal of this is to like arm them with enough simplified education yeah so that so that they can feel confident enough to go to their doctor so is there anything else that you would suggest um, that could help someone you know manage their symptoms and figure out if thyroid is the cause like what are your three biggest tips the three biggest tips would be to get the right tests, okay, get on the right medication, and just stand firm on what you know about your body. You know, your physician, your pharmacist, they're educated, but they're not you. You know, you know what you're living with and, and don't give up and don't give in. <laughs> I love it. You are your best advocate. Yes, you are your best advocate. Yes. Tell me a little bit more about Fed Up Pharmacist. How did you get started, and what's you know what's your what's your goal? Is, do you use Instagram mostly, or is it like a blog? So I have I have a poor neglected blog because I still work full time. I work forty hours a week at mm -hmm. a, a local hospital as a clinical inpatient pharmacist. Um, so when I get home, as you know, with somebody with you know, with a chronic illness, sometimes you have energy and sometimes you don't. So stress I, stress I have found is a huge trigger for my autoimmune symptoms. And so I just try not to burn the candle at both ends. But mm -hmm. in my spare time, I do. I try to use Instagram quite a bit to reach people. I would love to start blogging more. That's one of my goals. And I like to see patients. I do it locally. I'm working on branching out and getting some programs in place so I can do that remotely. Awesome. So that can help, yeah, so that can help coach people with like nutrition and healthcare and just and different things like that. So that's kind of that's, where this is headed. 
That's wonderful. Keep us posted. We would love to partner up and you know yes. suggest send people your way. Yeah, because I saw all your little supplement shop and it looks amazing. I'm so oh, impressed. Oh, thank you, thank you. I'm yes. working really hard to to find like really good products. My goal is to support small businesses. Yeah. So I'm doing. I'm trying to find small businesses that have high quality products and are affordable. So you know, that's so <laughs> diamond important. in the rough. I mean, when you're spending, <laughs> when you're spending all this money on doctors' visits and food and supplements. I mean, it does become overwhelming and I loved how I looked at your site and I loved how you have everything like if you're experiencing hair loss, if you're experiencing brain fog, these are the supplements because people, it's so confusing. It's, it's so, so confusing. confusing. Thank you so much. I really appreciate that. Yes, I loved it. I loved it. Um, so actually, if you have any suggestions on uh, supplements, that would be good to for us to carry. I'm happy to research it out uh, or sure. your, um, contact them. Yeah, I'll take a look at that. I know you sent me the stuff, and I went online yeah. and it was like, I don't know my tax ID number. So oh. I'm gonna <laughs> yeah, that's required, just obviously for tax reasons. Yeah, yeah. So I'll get that to you. Okay. Um, so okay, okay, so you on. are interested in any supplements that are going to help or manage thyroid issues, make sure you click on the link below. Um, it's going to go directly to Kirstie's. Uh, link so that way she gets the credit. Thank you so much for uh, partnering up with us for this video. This Lupus Life Hack series is definitely is our series, and we are so proud to have you on here. And our takeaway message for today is is be your own best advocate. Make sure you get the lab tests that you need and the prescription drugs that you need. Absolutely, couldn't have said it any better. <laughs>